Oh God, we thank you for your love for us. And today, as we as a church remember your ascension to heaven, remind us that you are nearer to us than our own breath, and that you guide us and you lead us so that we may walk in your ways and share your love with others. So God, we ask that you let the words of my mouth and the meditation of each heart here be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. So as I mentioned at the beginning of the service, today is Ascension Sunday. And for those of you who may not be familiar with uh, the church calendar and what that means, uh, 40 days after Jesus rose from the dead, he uh, ascended into heaven. And he sits at God's right hand, we profess when we uh, share in the creeds. And, and he is interceding for us. So he is up in heaven right now, interceding with us between us and God, and, and we are then now justified, and we are, we are connected fully to God because of where Christ is. And because Christ is there, there, there's another thing that we get to do. We get to rule and reign with Jesus Christ. He talks about the coming of the kingdom of God, and we'll hear about that a little bit more in the middle of the sermon. But, but it's a reminder for us that the kingdom of God is here for us, and we are able to live in that. A and we have the opportunity, and we have the, the, the joy and the privilege to proclaim Jesus to the world. Now, I don't know about you, but, but, but for me, every single one of us, we proclaim something. I don't care, care who you are, I don't care what you do, I don't care, care how long you've been on this earth, you have a, a, a propensity, if you will, to proclaim something. And if you follow me on social media, you know that I proclaim a lot of different things. And here are some of the things that I proclaim. Yeah, my Kansas State Wildcats, I, I proclaim them. Being a Kansas boy, I, I, I love, love that university. And by the way, they're the Big 12 football champions this year. Did you all know? Uh, I, I, may, I may have shared that with somebody here or there. Uh, I, I love to uh, smoke uh, meat. I uh, have my Kamado Joe, and I, and I share pictures of that all the time. And the meat that I always get is from Joe's Meat Market downtown. Love Joe's Meat Market. The filet mignons are just amazing. So always share that. And my Kansas City Royals, even though they're, they're absolutely horrible, I, I still proclaim them. But the thing that I have proclaimed most recently is that middle picture. Those things are beaver twist, and they are absolutely amazing. A few weeks ago, I did a funeral up in uh, Van Alstine. And when you're on a little road trip, you always stop at Bucky's. And there's a Bucky's in between here in Van Alstein in, in Melissa. So I stopped there just to get, you know, a, a drink and just to stretch my legs a little bit. I mean, not that far of a drive, but, you know, it's Bucky's. You have to stop. And as I've, I've got my drink and I'm starting to walk out to, to pay for the drink, and I realize that somebody's giving samples. And if you're like me, absolutely, yes, I would love to have a sample of whatever it is. So I go and I get in this long line and they hand these little things. They're, they're the little bugle uh, corn chip thingies and it's covered in, in white chocolate. <sighs> I took a bite of that thing and just almost melted there in the store. And I, and I went and I found a bag and I grabbed the bag and I get out to the car and I rip that thing open and I just start eating them and I, I think even before I hit Plano they were all gone you know it's just boom it's gone and, and I took a picture of it and I sent it to Tracy I said Tracy you got to have these I said well are you going to get them or just go to Roy City's Bucky's and pick them up so I did and and I shared it with my friends who were out of town and and just all over the place just talking about how awesome and how wonderful these little beaver twists are and I still highly recommend if you go to Bucky's to go and find them and, and, and enjoy them. But then I started to think, if I put all of this time and energy and talking about a little sweet snack 
that in my case was gone just like that. Or a football team that, you know, I, I, I didn't even graduate from Kansas State University, but I went there for a year, so I, I claim them. Or a baseball team that is absolutely horrible, or, or even a, a smoker, or a meat that, you know, this is comes and goes, or whatever. But then I don't spend that much time and energy proclaiming who Jesus is in my life. And what am I doing? How, how am I proclaiming or professing the faith that I hold on to? How do I profess or proclaim the faith that I say that I believe? Now, the answer isn't just to post more stuff about church stuff on social media. That's not the answer. But it's holding on to what it is that Jesus has given us and then sharing that with others. That's what's happening here in our story, in our scripture for today as we prepare to hear from the beginning of the book of Acts. Jesus is with his disciples. So I invite you to follow along with me as we hear this part of the story of Jesus from Acts chapter 1 verses 1 through 11. I invite you to follow along in your scriptures or if you have, uh, you can follow along with the words that are printed on the screen. Hear the word of the Lord. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them and over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes and a cloud hid them from their sight. They were looking intently upon, up into the sky and he, as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? The same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I love the picture of the ascension. I love the picture just thinking of the disciples gathered around Jesus as he's giving these, these last words and then he raises up into the sky and out of the disciples' sight and the disciples wondering, what do we do? What, what, what do we do now? What, what, what is it that we are supposed to, to, to do now that, now that Jesus is gone? But you know, the great thing about Jesus is that he has been giving the disciples what it is they were supposed to do from early on in his ministries. And the things that Jesus told his disciples that they were supposed to do are the same things that we are told to do even today. If you want a quick uh, run through of, of what it was that Jesus told them to do, if you look in the all four Gospels, you can see that there were places where, where Jesus told them how they were to proclaim him. But especially take a look at Matthew chapter 10, verses 7 through 8. Jesus is talking to his disciples before he sends them out two by two, and he says, Proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, 
Cleanse those who have leprosy. Drive out demons. Freely you have received, so freely give. So the answer is right there. What is it that we, as followers of Jesus Christ, what are we to proclaim? Well, the answer is simple. We are to proclaim that the kingdom of God is here. We can live within that kingdom of God right here and right now. If we look throughout the, all the Gospels, Jesus talks about the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven interchangeably over 100 times. And he's talking about this because he wants those who are, are listening to him to know that the kingdom of God is available to them. It's not something that they have to wait for. It's not something that will come at, at a later time, but it is something that, that we can grasp onto and that we can hold onto right now. That is the message that we are called to proclaim. We're, we're not trying to win people over to Jesus' side. We're not trying to say that, that we have had so many conversions or, or so many uh, views or, or witnesses to the gospel of Jesus Christ, but all we are called to do is to announce to anybody and everybody that the availability of God's kingdom is here. All we have to do is say we want to live within that kingdom. To, to have the opportunity to live within what God is already doing among us. And we have evidence of that, just as the disciples had evidence of that. We, we see that Jesus told them to go out and heal the sick, to raise the dead, and to cleanse those who have leprosy, and to drive out demons. A and that's kind of one of those areas that, we kind of tiptoe around as the church right now because we don't know if we really see those healing stuff happening right now. We don't know if we can say that we've seen somebody actually be healed of a demon or somebody raised from the dead or, or, or somebody that was healed from sickness or infirmities. But I can tell you that, that in my ministry and even in my time here, I have seen people be healed. I have seen people who have had a dark and lonely and depressing times come out of a funk because of the love that the church was able to pour upon them and the love that, that God has poured out upon them as well. I think of one of our church members who recently moved away to be closer to family who got a diagnosis of uh, throat cancer and had many, many operations and many times of, of surgeries and chemo and radiation and all of those type of things. And, and, and he stood down here and we had a group of people laying our hands and praying on him and him receiving the word that he was healed. I know there were other t stories of other people that we had prayed for that, that the healing that we were praying for didn't necessarily come, but the after effects of after that person's passing, the, the gifts that they were able to give through organ donations was able to give life to somebody else. We, 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 we know that, that God calls us to proclaim that he heals and he, he makes people whole and he, he drives demons out of people because we know and see the promise that God has for us through different ways. The first way is that the Holy Spirit is with us and it gives us the opportunity to see those things. Another one is that we see through the promises of Scripture, through, through Genesis all the way through Revelation, we see the promises that God gives to us and we see those promises come to light in our own lives. I can tell you how many times that I have gone through something and, and whenever I open up scriptures, I see God giving me words of comfort, words of peace, words of understanding. I had a conversation recently with a church member who was going through a really difficult time with her mother. A and 
she was going through the stress and, and through trying to figure out the best ways to help, uh, help with medication and with doctor visits and everything. And she said, Pastor Chris, but one of the things that happened, there were three songs that played time after time after time. And as I was listening to those three songs, I felt God's presence saying, I am with you but I'm caring for you. Lean on me, trust in me, and I will help see you through. See, that's the other way that we feel God's presence in our lives is it's the community that's around us. Being surrounded by people to, to care for one another, to, to watch for one another, to pray for one another, to support one another. Because the gift that we have from God isn't something that we hold to ourselves. See, Jesus, at the very end of sending out the disciples in, in Matthew 10, he says, freely you have received, freely you give. See, see we are given this gift from God, the grace from God, the, the gifts from God, the, the pardon from God, all of those things we receive, and then we then in turn turn around and give those gifts to others. One of the biggest blessings that I see as a pastor is, is our children a and seeing them run around, seeing them play, seeing them laugh and giggle, lay down in the pews, put their feet up on the pews, all, whatever it is that they're doing. You know, they, they, they are a blessing and a privilege. And, and I remember a time before the pandemic where we had a children's ministry that was booming and we're starting to have that booming children's ministry again but but there's one of the things that i'm noticing while we have the kids showing up we have less adults showing up we have less adults pouring what god has given them into the lives of the younger kids in our community so that they can see and know the grace of God in their lives. That's why Vacation Bible School is so important. It, it, it's not a quick daycare for families to drop off a kid for a couple of hours so they can go shopping or, or, or go to a, a restaurant and have a quick meal. It is a chance for us as the body of Christ to pour into the kids and our community. The same thing with their jam ministry. I remember when jam, we would, we would have kids coming from all over the community and, and we would have adults sitting at the tables, pouring into them, sharing with them, loving with them. I would love in my heart to see next September when we get started back again that the F Wesley Hall is filled, not only with kids, but with adults saying, you know, God freely gave to me and I don't care if I'm 25 or if I'm 85 years old. I am going to pour what God has given to me back into these kids so that they can hear my faith. And then it can become their faith as I proclaim something way more important than beaver twist way more important than a, a football team or a baseball team that I can pour into them and proclaim to them and witness to them the love of Jesus in my life so I can become a part of their life. You have a story to share, folks. You have a story to share of God's great love and mercy. And sometimes I think we get lost in thinking about where it is that we are called to share those stories. Well, at the very end of Acts chapter 1, Jesus tells us where we are to share these stories. One, chapter 1, verse 8, he says, You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of of the earth. That is where we are called to share the good news of Jesus Christ. 
And I'm not talking about getting on a plane and going over to Jerusalem or Judea or to Samaria, but those places live within our own environments here in the United States. When we talk about sharing the message of, of Jesus through Jerusalem, that's like looking at our house, lo lo looking at those who we live with, our, our spouses, our kids, our, our parents, our grandkids. I if we can't share our love of Jesus Christ with those who are around us, then it's going to be very hard for us to share our faith with those outside of the wall. We must take the opportunity to make sure that we share what Jesus has done for us with our people when near us. Maybe share with them, to, to give them the hope that we have. When we talk about sharing in all of Judea, that's like taking it the next step out. Finding ways to share how Jesus is active in your life, maybe at your workplace. Or if you go out to a Bucky's or to a Joe's Meat Market or to a restaurant or, or, or wherever you like to hang out. And, and just being an example of God's love and grace out for others. It's not necessarily making sure that you, you tell people time and time again, but, but through your actions, through how you live your life, gives them a chance for them to see the hope that you live in. And then they can make that hope a part of their hope. You know, when Jesus said this next place, I, I, I can see it, it probably made the disciples kind of scratch their heads a little bit. When he talked about sharing in Jerusalem and then sharing in Judea, they go, okay, we can do that. But then you have to go to Samaria. If you're familiar with Samaria, you may be familiar with the Good Samaritan. There was not a good relationship between the Samaritans and the Jewish people, and that's a whole nother sermon to unpack all of that. But, but the last people that the Jewish people would want to be in relationship with would be the Samaritans. So Jesus is even saying, who is it in your life that you don't want to share with, that I'm calling you to share with? Is it somebody who may think politically different than you? Is it somebody who may think sports team different than you? Is it somebody who maybe has a different job that is in competition with you? Or maybe it's somebody that lives in a part of town that you wouldn't even think about stepping foot in. See, Jesus calls us to share the message of hope and of being available to God's kingdom to even those that we normally wouldn't want to talk to because the kingdom is available and open to all people to experience the love and grace just as God has experienced and given that love and grace for us. So if you look in your bulletins, there is a spiritual practice for you. To think about how do we proclaim Jesus. And the very first way that I would love for you to do this is this week to take a look and revisit John 3, 16, and 17. Sometimes we're maybe very familiar with John 3, 16. The, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. And that's a perfect and beautiful verse, and it's one that you should have set in your heart. But I think verse 17 is as important as verse 16, that God did not come to condemn the world, but God came to save the world, that all may have life and life abundantly in and through him. Set a timer for like five minutes to reflect on what those verses mean about proclaiming Jesus to the world and, and how you may need to get unstuck in proclaiming Jesus to others and the sharing his love with others. And then take time to notice where your Jerusalem, where your Judea, and where your Samaria is. And think about how you can take the opportunity to proclaim 
the good news to people in those areas of your life. A couple of weeks ago, I uh, talked about hab- having a moment where you share text messages when somebody pops into your mind and or call somebody or leave a note. And I did that a couple of times with a couple of people, and I had some of the best conversations. In the midst of those conversations, even though I may not have talked about Jesus in that moment, I know that they could feel the hope that I had in Christ and my desire for them to live with that same hope so that they can rely on Jesus. And then as they freely receive the grace of God, they can then go out and freely share that grace with others. Let us pray. Oh God, you have given us so much. And as we take the opportunity to remember that that we are not alone, even as you have ascended to the heavens and to sit at God's right hand, you are there when we proclaim, when we witness, when we share. God, I pray that you give us the opportunity to share our faith with others to give an answer for the hope that we have in you so that hope may become their hope. And we continue that cycle over and over again so that this entire community and this entire world knows your love for them. Give us your grace. Give us your mercy and help us to share you with others. And we pray this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.